Hi, this is Rob Nelson, and I am the creator and author of Sagelight. And what I'd like to do here is to give you a quick tour of the Quick Edit mode. You know, when you open up a file, um, as you've probably already seen, you come into the Quick Edit mode. When you do other functions, whether you're, it's the cloning brush or the toning brush or removing red eye or what have you, you always come back into the Quick Edit mode. It's, it's kind of like home base. Um, the Quick Edit mode is made for just that. It's made to be very intuitive as opposed to intentional. You don't really have to know what you want to do with your image. Uh, the first step when you come into the quick edit mode is usually to hit the um, auto levels and auto color. And this will uh, typically brighten your image and it'll enhance the color sometimes uh, depending on whether there's a color cast or not. Um, this, this box here is a subject of another video so I don't want to get into it too much here except to say that the first option is um, usually the best option for most pictures. You can use other options, but here I'm just going to select the first option and you can see that the picture is already quite a bit um, brighter. And before I get into a lot of the controls with the quick edit mode, I want to show how powerful it is by just showing that I'm just going to make two slider movements here. Um, and already you can see that the image is, is quite a bit nicer. I could just if I just wanted to post this on the web, it'd already be ready. Um, so that's how powerful the quick edit mode is. And so now I want to get into uh, you know, more of the controls and what they do. In the previous example, I was able to just make a couple slider movements. I did the auto color and a couple slider movements, and it made a very big difference in the picture. I think that really shows what kind of power is in just this quick edit mode. Um, it doesn't mean that you need to really know a lot about image editing or all of these controls here you know, in the quick edit mode. The quick edit mode, and really just stage light in general, is made so that you don't need to be intentional about your image. You can uh, experiment and um, just play around and then what happens is after a couple of sessions you'll get used to what these controls do. For instance, uh, these RGB controls are, are made to uh, work together and um, you can just really get any effect you like, which you can do, like I said, you get used to how they work together after a couple of sessions. You can say, well, I don't like this light area, so I'm going to back off on it, but then, you know, of course, we'll get darker, but then I can bring up the, the mid-tones to compensate or, you know, just play with the controls and get used to them just, just as they become intuitive to me without really having to know what's happening with them. Uh, similarly, with the color toner and uh, color curves, you can um, play around with those two and just um, experiment until you get something that you like. Like I, I really like the redness that's happening here and so forth. Um, I think the only rule for stage light is to experiment. You can always go back. Like if I uh, saturate this too much and play around with it and I decide I just don't really like that, I can always step back to where I was. I can reload the file. And even when I reload, if I decide I want to go back, I can always look at what I'm doing in the uh, history buffer and then I can, I can go back to it. I can also take a, a snapshot of what I'm doing and then go back to that. And so you can just experiment and then if you don't like the result, you can just go back or start completely over. Uh, since it's a fairly intuitive process and it's, and it's fast, there's plenty of room to experiment without spending an hour on your picture. So what I want to do now is I want to edit this image as I normally would. So I can revert to the original image and then I can do the auto levels and the auto colors just as before. And you'll notice that the color value on the color slider rather on the color toner is set. And so what that is is that's when you do the auto levels and auto colors on the way out it sets this value to what is the most neutral value for the image. It doesn't change your image because it leaves the strength at zero. What it allows you to do is to either warm your image up or to make your image a little more neutral. Typically it's in a pretty good aesthetic range or pretty close to it. For example, I'm going to make it a little cooler here, but I'm also going to bring it into the reds to make it a little warmer. Now once, once I've done that, um, it's not necessarily the next step you ha have to do, or in fact sometimes you can just ignore that. Uh, the next step for me is to look at the RGB adjust and like I said these controls are designed to work together. Um, they've been developed over quite a period of time um, 
just for this editor and to work together not only with themselves but these other controls as well. Um, as I mentioned, you can see what's going on in the uh, histogram w with these curves as, as you move them around. Uh, not just the curves, but also the uh, saturation and the uh, everything that you do in the, in the quick edit mode. Um, what you might notice is, see these little bumps in the, in the curve there? Uh, what they are is these are these controls working together. These, this would represent a subtle change after multiple curves. Uh, you're looking at a composite here of probably with these settings here upwards of 15 to 20 curves. And so you're seeing little changes in your image based on how you set the RGB controls. As I mentioned, um, Sageslight is a 48-bit image editor, so these curves come out to be very clean. Um, anyway, so what you can do is you can just experiment with these controls um, until you just get a result that, that you like. Um, for example, if you think it's going too bright here, you can always back off on this and then bring the brightness up and, and so forth. In this particular example, I just really mean to bring down the shadows, just really one slider movement. But I could have gotten this result in many other, other ways as, as well, um, just by just by experimenting. Um, so that's the basic tour um, in this particular image. This is really all I care to do. I can undo the fine mode if I want to really bring it down. In the fine mode you can see as much larger changes. Um, as I said in this particular case, this is pretty much all I care to do with the picture. Maybe bring up the saturation a, a little bit um, and I'm done. I think that really shows the power of the quick edit mode. And when I'm done, a nice thing that you can do to look at your image. You can look at it side by side to see, you know, maybe it's gone a, a bit different than you expected. You know, you can use this kind of anchor um, how you see the uh, the image you're working on. So, you know, I can use that to say, well, maybe I do want to go a little bit more um, warm on, on this particular one and that sort of thing. But another thing you can do too, even if you don't keep it, just uh, you can, what you can do is you can draw a shadow uh, on the border and then you can look at it full screen. And that can give you a real nice view of your image in, in a context. Um, and then when you're done looking at it, you can just back off and continue your editing. So anyway, so that's the tour. And I hope you um, like what you see and have fun editing your images.